Tell Me My Truth is the second exhibition instalment of Mass Group Incident, a major five-month multi-stage project curated and produced by 4A Centre for Contemporary Asian Art, which incorporates a series of exhibitions, site-specific projects, performances, live art, public programs and film screenings. For Tell Me My Truth, we've brought together a number of artists from Australia, Asia and abroad whose works address pertinent and often contentious questions and relationships between the individual and the group. In particular, the works look at ideas and relationships between remembrance and negation, fiction and documentary, and privacy and surveillance in the public realm. My name is Harsono and I'm an artist from Indonesia. The work that I show in this, uh, in this exhibition is about uh, I make a performance, but the performance does not, not look like a performance, but I uh, just uh, come to the mass graves and then I wrapping the, the pastel on the fabrics. I starting to make a research from 2008 and until this time I already found 10 mass graves in uh, East Java and Central Java. Yeah, that, that's just East Java and Central Java. All of these mass graves is about uh, the Chinese people who, who massacred during, during 1947-48 and then they uh, buried in these mass graves uh, starting from 1951. So uh, I'm still uh, trying to find another mass grave. So it's look like that this project is still ongoing. And also I uh, already found some uh, eyewitness and also some people who knows about this, uh, this massacre and then I interview. Before this project, I also has a, uh, another project about uh, my name, the memory of a name, and then I about uh, the my Chinese name who already I never use it again from 1966 uh, or something like that, and then uh, after 2002. So uh, the the political situation in Indonesia, political situation in Indonesia was changed totally changed. All of the Chinese people can can celebrate the New Year, and also the school can teaching the uh, Chinese language. So I re uh, remember my Chinese name. I rubbing uh, I rubbing uh, the, the the gravestone because I don't want to just only to uh, documenting, but I want to have uh, like a print from that mass graves uh, to show that this is. Uh, this is a real, this is real, this is not uh, just only documentation, something like that. And uh, so when I rub, I feel that this is uh, my pilgrimage to the people who, who uh, buried in this mass, mass graves and also a performance, as a performance of my, my pilgrimage, something like that. Yeah. The title of my work is uh, Pilgrimage, uh, it's been that uh, I pilgrimage to the to the to the dead people who uh, who buried in these mass graves and um, my the way of my pilgrimage is not just only pray but also perform uh, as an artist when I came back to live in Australia um, last year after having lived away for eight years I wanted to get a sense of the space of the city again, this city of mine, which I was uh, away from, estranged from, probably. So it was about uh, reoccupying that space um, and walking the pathways that I had walked for a long time. And so when it came to being invited or being commissioned to, to make a work, I returned to the space in which this place in which Gallery 4A um, is located. And I was aware, because I had done research on uh, the Sydney Plague for my PhD, and I knew the photographs of the region, of the area, and I knew too that this area had been a Chinatown and that, that had been eliminated at the time, at the turn of the 20th century. So I was interested in rewalking those streets and and looking for, if you like, the spirits of that past, which it seemed to me to, ha to have contemporary uh, resonance in uh, Australia's um, 
attitude to refugees today, for example. So I became really interested in this particular block uh, of Sydney, which is bound by Riley Street, Campbell Street, Elizabeth Street and Goulburn Street. And this was essentially the, the core of what had been Chinatown at the turn of the 20th century. And the thing that's very interesting is that it became specifically subject to demolitions in, in that period, in part, I think, because uh, Chinese lived there and, and there was a desire to sort of, you know, remove that population. And, uh, and, the, and the thing that's really quite curious about it is that uh, what filled the space were, you know, like rooming houses where the Chinese market gardeners came to, to stay overnight before coming to the markets, or they were historically markets in front of what is now the gallery. And there were also, you know, opium dens and gambling dens and, you know, sly grog joints and so on. So it was a fairly rich kind of area. When the demolitions occurred, uh, the, and, and probably as a result of the Chinese living there, the space was already a, a kind of a space where security was an issue, a space where surveillance was an aspect of existence to the extent that we know the names of every one of the Chinese who lived in those streets. So we have that, you know, social, we have that not metadata any longer, but we've got social data about the people who lived there, that, you know, even though long before social media makes it possible to extract that data, it does exist anyway, because census and all sorts of other mean technical and, and, uh, and official means of gathering data, social data, is already in place. But the place is also overdetermined by, uh, by what you might call a, a, sign of, a kind of security space, uh, a police space. On one corner uh, of the block that I delineated for the purposes of the project, the New South Wales Police Centre occupies almost a, you know, huge, uh, it's a huge space. On another corner, there is uh, the former CIB building and that's beside the building that was that became Imperial Slack's artists' spaces. On another corner, uh, on the corner of Goulburn and uh, uh, Wentworth Avenue, or Wexford Street it would have been, there is now the Federal uh, Police Building, and in one of the clips I walk around that building, and you can see on every corner there are security cameras. Uh, so it's very much a, a kind of police uh, space in a certain sense, a security space, and and so it's kind of interesting then to, to use the, to identify the characteristics of behaviour that are now considered to be suspicious by national security, and all of those activities are activities that I practised in the making of the work, uh, you know, photographing infrastructure, um, uh, having a. a, a private life that didn't add up, having multiple identities and so on, all of those things we all possess, we all you know, behave like that. So we're all suspicious. You know, everyone has become suspicious, which is a really problematic aspect of the, of the security environment that we currently live in. Um, and in fact, uh, it only succeeds in, in uh, imprisoning everyone rather than ever capturing the, the, the so-called perpetrators. My name is Amala Groom. I'm a 35-year-old Wiradjuri woman. I live and work in Sydney. The work that I have put into Telling My Truth is an autobiographical work and it's called Journey to the Night. The story of the name um, is autobiographical in the way that it's a journey from one experience to another experience of enlightenment and my name, Amala, um, in Buddhist text is the ninth consciousness, which is the, essentially the level of enlightenment. In this work, I'm utilising existing materials um, in the same vein of appropriation, and I'm appropriating Western religious iconography to be able to tell a Aboriginal um, or a Wiradjuri ceremonial experience it also explores the oneness of religion. Well, I started making art after doing years of different cultural work within the context of different ceremonies and learning intensely about Aboriginal law and 
practicing Aboriginal law and throughout learning and practicing Aboriginal law, I was taught to always follow my Kurumpa, which is a, it's a um, young Kurunjara word, so I was taught by a lot of people out there and people that had connections to country out there, which is fundamentally a similar, irrespective of the word in, different la in each different language group, it's the same thing. So it's following your feelings and that the that your feelings are an indicator of your connection to your ancestors and in my own language Wiradjuri the Nurembang which is like the other world country old people so I follow my feelings um, in my life but essentially it's just being in tune with being on the wind listening to the ancestors it's essentially lead what it is that you do and the decisions that you make in your life and then the intellect is an afterthought to be able to, it's like a toolbox. At every stage throughout the creative process, um, my um, ideas, everything comes from my connection to my culture. Then it's my intellect um, which uh, provides the research to be able to understand why it is that I'm using particular objects to be able to tell a particular story. In the distance, the white building's stability is threatened by the mass encircling it. People pull at the temporary fencing and gravitate towards the building's seductive surface. The sound of the crowd develops a pulse reminiscent of bodily fluids, as if millions of litres of blood, urine and saliva are expanding and contracting within a network of veins, limbs, bodies, paths and streets. From the centre of this pulsing form, People use small machines to try and capture images and sounds of the spectacle unfolding around them. As they hold the machines to their faces, they momentarily freeze tiny fragments of the scene in order to show and talk about later. It wasn't that I was intending to make a work. I was documenting um, a whole series of demonstrations in Portugal where I was living at the time. And I think I was sort of building up an archive in a way with the intention that maybe this material would be something, but... Um, it wasn't until I started to focus on the, the act of looking and being looked at with the, with the, the confrontation of camera views that I thought that um, this was something that I wanted to collect more images of. But it was particular for me that I wasn't making it like I'm working on a project. It's rather I'm gathering material that may or may not lead towards something. So it was quite a, that's also why it's 2013-14 because I was filming over a year and then it took quite a long time for it to kind of materialise into a piece. A number of things, like it related to previous work that I'd done, um, where I'd kind of looked at demonstration or protest in some ways as a form of performance, and this thing of um, people mobilising and, and, and trying or actually enacting ideology. And I think it's, but it, you know, that's one thing, but, but more specifically in terms of why Lisbon, I was living there, and um, of course, if you're living in a place, you try to understand things about a place, and protests are a very public way to hear or see what people are pushing against or um, trying to verbalise, um, make public. And so I was somehow participating, but also a voyeur, um, understanding fragments, but not the whole, linguistically, but also just in terms of culturally. Um, so I think you find yourself, you know, even in your own country, sometimes being part of something, tagging alongside, but not necessarily knowing that position of whether you're you know, part of this movement or somehow, especially if you're someone who works visually and collecting visual material, that somehow, even by the act of having a camera, you're somehow peripheral. You're sort of part, but you're actually kind of detached because you're observing and also consuming um, from a different perspective of just being present. I think symbolically, I, I, it's, it's the camera, consumes um, and I think that's part of my when I say about um, being self-reflexive it's a questioning of consumption of participation or consumption I see the camera as um, as sort of uh, creating a, a some sort of filter to reality that that the act of um, photographing me or the other people um, there's a detachment from direct participation and then so therefore there's some sort of that detachment, but beyond that there's also a consumption.